Hi, this is an overview of Snap MD5 version 1.04. has some new features from previous versions that I wanted to go over briefly. The first and most obvious one is that there's now a SHA-1 hash, so it does kind of make the name Snap MD5 a little bit misleading because it doesn't only do MD5 sums, but I figured I'd leave the name just to avoid any more confusion. Uh, I'd also like to go over just briefly some reasons for checking the hash for downloading a file. Some people have asked why they even want to bother with it. Some of the reasons, uh, so mainly it's for file integrity. Some of the reasons you may want to check it would be if you have an unreliable internet connection, that could be if you have dial-up or wireless, sometimes those connections can fail and you may not realize that the file you downloaded didn't finish completely. Sometimes you just have strange server errors where the connection doesn't seem to be stable. It can also be very useful for very large files like ISOs where you can think you've gotten the whole file and then go burn it to a CD and then find out that it didn't have the complete file. So that's kind of one area where you can use hashes. What it does is it makes sure that you have bit for bit the exact same file that was up on the server that's now downloaded to your file system. There are two other pretty much related uh, related to checking of hashes would be for security. The first scenario would be if some hackers got to a server and changed out the file, they could swap out the download and you could get something else completely, or they could leave the download for the most part and add a Trojan or a virus or some other malware uh, attached to the binary. Now, this certainly doesn't completely solve the problem because a hacker worth his salt would be able to, and no pun intended there, on the salt with hashes but the hacker would be able to simply create new hashes and then you'd not have any idea that, that the file isn't the valid one. So what you really want to do is find a source of hashes and maybe date stamped or in some way that they can uh, be more secure, but that's kind of beyond the, the scope of this video. Another thing is a lot of sites have mirrors out there that that uh, you know keep tr copies of the files that you're going to be downloading and if the mirror is out of date then you could use the latest hashes from the primary site the main website to see if you've gotten and you'd know that you got an out of date file it's not the same hash and then you could also just make sure that the file wasn't changed in any way by any of the mirror sites now some people will use the hashes from the mirror site and that would usually work because mirrors are typically automated and they're just grabbing the hashes off of the main site. But that may not be the case. So if there's anyone that's trying to do anything uh, you know, tricky, you'll probably want to make sure you check it yourself. All right, enough of me talking. Let's jump into the example. So the first one is Free Commander, a fantastic Explorer replacement utility that I use extensively. And I'm going to be talking about that later. But for this screencast we're just going to go over how to use the md5 sum so you'll see here it has the file name the creation file size and the file md5 so we just click that and copy it i usually use the control c just for convenience and then you download it and i've already downloaded it here so we can see the fc setup.zip one thing to note is it doesn't matter what the file name is, it only matters what the hash comes out as. So you can rename this to whatever you want and it'll still have the same hash. And then we run, now let me do the, for the example, we'll show how it works here. So you can see it just pasted in from the clipboard. This is just pasting whatever is in the clipboard. So if you hit Control V, or if you had right-clicked and selected paste, it would do the same thing. So the slow way of doing it is to browse over to the file that you just downloaded, and then it'll compute the MD5 sum and the SHA-1 at the same time, and you can see it matches the MD5 sum like we expected. The faster way to do it is by having it as a tool in Free Commander, so you can simply select it, and it does it right away. I've modified the download just to show 
what happens if the file doesn't match. So let's say the download stopped partway through and I run it, it'll tell you that it's not a match. So the file doesn't match either the MD5 sum or the SHA-1. So it'll check both of them. All right, and just as another example, the utility named WinSCP or WinSCopy is another very useful utility I use quite a bit, and it has both the MD5 and the SHA-1. So we're gonna do the same thing. We've got the SHA-1, and then we'll start out with the one that works. And again, it's simply pasted what's in the clipboard, and then it compares it with the SHA-1 and sees that the SHA-1 matches. And if we were to use the corrupt file, you can see we get the same error output, letting you know it doesn't match. So if you did ever get this, it's probably not going to be very common, but if you do find that the file doesn't match, it could be that the mirror that you downloaded it from has an older version, or it could be that the file download was corrupt and you simply needed to download a new one. So you kind of have to figure that out on your own. There were a few minor elements I added as well. Down in the toolbar, you can see it has status, and I've also added some ways to reset so you can do things from the menu as well. And that's about it. Hope you enjoy SnapMD5.